You're probably already using the FreeCAD Sketcher Dimensioning tool, but chances are you're not unlocking its full potential. This powerful all-in-one constraint feature makes dimensioning FreeCAD faster and easier. So there's no need to switch between separate tools, but many users overlook a key feature, the ability to toggle between different constraint types based on the geometry or the future geometry you select. In this video, my aim is to help you master that dimensioning tool, using it in the FreeCAD Sketcher, improving your workflow and the speed at which you complete the sketch. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's have a look at this tool in FreeCAD Sketcher. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. Before we dive into the different modes of the dimension tool, let's see how it's used. I'm going to start with two lines. And you notice I've placed one slightly lower than the other, these two points here. Now there's a reason for this. We're going to dimension between these two. So let's use the dimensioning tool and select one point and then the other point. So we get our dimension in there and depending where we place the mouse pointer, we'll activate a different dimension. Now there's an easier way to visualize this. If we look at this point here, and draw horizontal lines going all the way across. That's right click to cancel. And the same with this point going this way and also vertical. We can divide the screen up into different areas. So with a constraint between these two points after selecting them, anything within this area is a distance constraint. If we start moving up past that horizontal line or below the horizontal line, we dimension along the horizontal. When we start looking at the vertical, we have to be in this area. So it's the area between the two horizontal lines, but to the left or to the right of the vertical ones. Anything else will be a distance constraint. When we dimension, we can right click to cancel at any time and we go back to our dimensioning tool. Right click again, we go back to normal selection mode. If we select those points again, after selecting the dimensioning tool and then left click, we add a dimension. After changing the dimension and hitting okay, the dimension's added and we get the tool back. I'm just gonna hit control Z. Let's right click to cancel as there's another way to add the dimension. We've been selecting it from the toolbar. We can also use it by selecting the points first. Now I'm selecting one point and then just clicking the other point. I'm not holding down control. You can see on the left hand side, the elements have been added. If I click this one again, it removes the element. This is known as the hungry selection. I've talked about this in previous videos before. So when we add those points, then we can use a dimensioning tool. Then it allows us to add the dimension between those two points. And that's the same with edges as well. So if I take this edge and then select this edge, depending on what we've selected, we will get different dimensions. So for instance, if we take a circle and then right click and use the dimensioning tool, we get the diameter. Let's right click and then say, take the edge of this circle and the edge of this line we get a distance between those. The dimension tool is very powerful because although we've got this dimension here, we can use M on the keyboard to change the dimension. So let's go through the different dimensions that are added depending on the geometry and the element selection. So now let's go through the different modes of the dimensioning tool. Let's create a simple edge with a single line. Notice that I didn't place the line this way Otherwise I get the horizontal or vertical constraint kick in. I want something that's unconstrained. Let's use the dimensioning tool and select the edge to start with. Straight away we get a distance constraint. 
Now we're going to cycle through the different modes using the M key. If I hit M on the keyboard, we get a horizontal constraint. If I hit M again, we get the vertical constraint. If I hit M once more, we get a lock constraint. So you'll see a pattern with the horizontal and vertical constraints added first. M again, we just get back the normal distance constraint. At any time we can select M and then click to accept. And we're back with the dimensioning tool. Hit Control Z on the keyboard to undo that and add the dimension again. This time I'm gonna hit M and then M again. Now, I don't like this dimension. I don't want it. That's right click to cancel. We've got the dimensioning tool still active, which is canceled out of the last dimensioning. Again, we can hit escape to also cancel out the dimensioning. This time, let's select the point. Now this is going to dimension to the center point by default with a single selection. If I hit M on the keyboard, we get a horizontal and vertical distance. If I click, I can start adding in the constraints one by one, which is quite a time saver. Right click to cancel. I'm just going to delete those constraints by selecting them and hitting delete on the keyboard. So back to where we was before. Again, let's select the dimensioning tool and select this point and pressing M cycles through those different dimensions. Now we can add a second selection by coming over and selecting say the vertical axis. So we get a distance away from the vertical axis. I hit M on the keyboard, then there's no other modes to choose. We just hit M again to get that back. Let's right click to cancel. That's dimension against something else. So let's add say another edge. I'm just going to place it here on this vertical axis. Right click to get the mouse pointer back. Use the dimensioning constraint. This time select the point, it dimensions to the center, and then select this point. So we get this distance away. If I hit M on the keyboard, we're constraining those along the horizontal. If I hit M again, we haven't centered the point, it's constrained it along the vertical. If I hit M again, we're back to our normal distance constraint. That's right click to cancel, and this time we'll select the line itself or the edge and the other edge. The first dimension we get is an angle constraint. If I hit M on the keyboard, this adds an equality constraint to make these two of equal length. If I hit M again, we're back to the angle constraint. That's right click to cancel. Normally the first couple of constraints are normally horizontal or vertical. If they can't be added, then another constraint is applied. Let's have a look at point to edge constraint. So I'm constraining to this edge now. We can see the edge has been highlighted in yellow. So I'm not constraining to the axis. Let's click that edge. So we get a distance away from the point to the edge as default. If I hit M on the keyboard, we get something different. You can't apply a horizontal or vertical constraint. It's applied a symmetry constraint. If we hit M again, we're back to where we was before. Remember, after hitting M, if we decide that we want that constraint, we just left click to apply it. And we're back with our tool. Let's hit Control Z. If we don't want to apply that constraint and we want to cancel, we just right click. So hit M, we've got the symmetry, right click, we cancelled out that constraint. Our tool is still active, ready for further constraining. Let's right click to cancel and delete these and move on to some other geometry. Let's add a circle this time. So this time, if we right click and click the dimensioning tool, we can dimension the circle with a diameter. If I hit M on the keyboard, it becomes a radius. And switching back toggles between diameter and radius. That's right click to cancel. And this is the same with arcs as well. So let's create an arc. Right click and add the dimensioning constraint. Select the edge of the arc. We get a radius. If I hit M again, we get the diameter. 
Now there's two more. If I hit M again, I get the angle between these two points. And if I hit M once more, we get the length along that curve. So the circumference of the curve. M again to go back to the radius. That's right click to cancel. With the circle, let's have a look at edge constraint to the vertical axis. So we get a distance constraint between those two. If I hit M on the keyboard, there's no other constraints to add. So that's the only constraint we can have with that selection. The same with our arc. Let's take the arc and the vertical axis. We get a distance, hitting M on the keyboard, doesn't expand our options, and we just right click to cancel. Now, because this is a point, it will go to the center of our sketch, the point of origin, and we have the same selection as before. If I hit M, we get the double constraint. We've got the double distance there. Hit M, and we're back to our normal distancing. And it will be the same with the points on the arcs because they're point constraints. But what happens if we add a second selection? This point, and then click a second point. We get the normal distancing. If we remember back, the logical flow, hit M on the keyboard, it'll add a horizontal constraint, M again, a vertical constraint. And once more, back to the distancing. And that's the same for any point, no matter what the geometry. So we've covered a single selection and a second selection. Is there such thing as a third selection? Well, there is. We have our circle. We have a point, say this point and this point. So if I take one point and the next point, we dimension between those. If we add a third point, then that places them all in horizontal alignment. If I hit M on the keyboard, we get vertical alignment. M once more, we now have symmetry between the arc, the point and the center point of the circle. That's right click to cancel. Another constraint that we can add is with light geometry. So this circle here and this arc here, if I click one edge and then click the other, it places a distance away between those. If I hit M, it's actually centered the points. So it's made those coincident to each other. And we can set the distance away between these two. Let's click and set this to say 10. And we have a distance and a constrained arc and circle. So now let's look at two circles and see the behavior between those. We know that the center points, if we use those and we get a distance and we get a horizontal with M and then a vertical with M. These aren't coincident. You can see the constraint in here, but if we do want them to become coincident, we can use two edges. Hit M on the keyboard. That adds both a coincident constraint, you see it here, and a distance constraint. And we can set the distance between those, say 12 millimeters. And that's Control Z that. And that's the same for arcs as well. But this goes further. If I hit M, we get the distance. M again these become equal. And once more, we go back to the distance. Lastly, let's have a look at a basic box. So this is the same points and edges. We have the same behavior. So if I take the dimension tool and select one, we're going to get a distance. If I select another, we're going to get an angle between these two. It's going to go into over constrained here. And this is because we got the vertical and horizontal. So they're working against each other. We've got a 90 degree angle and it's locked in because of those. Let's right click, right click again and delete. Let's just delete one of those. So now I use dimension constraint and select both. We don't get that. And we can set this angle to what we want. Right click to cancel, let's click the constraint, hit delete, and go back to the tool. So we've got the angle between two edges, hit M on the keyboard, we get these two equal, M again, we're back to the angle. So what happens when we expand that selection to four? 
Let's take the four circles on the screen and select the dimensioning tool. If we select, say, the center points of these two and a third one, we get the horizontal constraint. We can add a fourth and it gets added with the same constraint. The M toggles between. If there was a fifth or sixth one, then the same would happen. So that's Control Z. And this time, rather than use the points, let's use the edges. I'll select one, select in the other, select in the next one. They've become all equal. This one hasn't, but we're still in that multi-selection mode. Because I haven't clicked into space to accept that, the minute I select the other one, then this becomes equal as well. So what happens when we put this all together? I'm just going to right click to cancel. I've got the four circles on screen and I'm going to add a rectangle. Now I've forgotten to use a centered rectangle because I want it centered over this center point here. Let's use the dimensioning tool to take this point, this point and the center point. We get this error because of the current mode. If we hit M and then M again and watch up here, silver failed. Our constraint has taken. Let's click to get rid of the message. Click again to accept the constraint. We now can add our second constraint, which I'm going to make these two and hit M to make those equal. We've got equal sides and centered. Click to accept and let's take this side and dimension it to 90 millimeters. Our rectangle is constrained. That's set a distance away to the center of this circle. Hit M and we'll click. And I want these both at 25, 25 and 25. Next, I'm going to set the dimension for these. So let's select them, one, the other, the third, those are equal. We add one more to make that equal as well. And then we click to accept. So the equal constraints are going to cross those. Now I want to place these in line. So I'm going to take these two points and hit M on the keyboard to place those in line. Click to accept these two, M on the keyboard to place them in line and click to accept. The same for the vertical. M on the keyboard, once again, get the vertical constraint, click to accept, and then these two as well. M on the keyboard, we've got horizontal, M for vertical, and then click to accept. Right click to cancel, and you can see already, we've got these nicely dimensioned. Our last dimension we could place in, say, a symmetrical constraint, Hit M on the keyboard, M again. They're symmetrical to the center. Click to accept, right click to cancel. And we've got these equal at the moment. We just need a single dimension of 20 millimeters. So you can see how you can use a dimensioning tool to add those dimensions in. The way I've dimensioned this sketch might not be the way that will do it in the real world. There's 101 ways to dimension the sketch. You saw me use no other constraints. I just came out to position some of these and then went back to the dimensioning tool. That paired with the shortcut. So the shortcut to the dimensioning tool is D to dimension. Will make your life a lot easier when you're sketching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g-0 or via paypal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos i thank everybody that's donated so far it really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.